can get those in. Okay, so um, let's let's get rolling. Welcome again. We are delighted that you are here. This has been fun to keep clicking, clicking admit, admit, admit. We've got a good number of you here today. Um, we would invite you to please go ahead and mute unless you are the one who is talking so that we don't end up with any distracting background noise. And let's start with, actually, let's just say our whole lineup. How does that sound? Um, we'll first turn the time over to Liz Fisher. She's serving as first counselor. Uh, Liz will be follow, followed by Mary, and Mary is going to have help from Pam Hugie. So I'll let Mary introduce Pam. And then we'll hear from um, Terry Hawks, who is serving as second counselor. And then I have a couple sisters who are helping me that I'll introduce. And then we plan to be about wrapped up. Um, again, if some of you came in after we said this, please use the chat box. We would love to hear any of your comments, your thoughts, your questions. Also, please maybe grab a journal or a notebook. Liz. It's so fun to see so many faces. I'm excited about this. And without masks. That's lovely. Um, if I can. I've been really, really blessed to have this topic to study on unity and how we can be one in Jesus Christ. And I am so grateful for the time um, that I've been able to study in this topic and to learn more. I don't know if many of you know that unity is a commandment. It actually is. And that's found in Mosiah chapter 18. And I just want to share that with you. Because it's kind of become, in the last couple of months, as our Relief Society presidency has uh, counseled together, it's become like our catchphrase. So let me go on and share that with you. It says, and he commanded them that there should be no contention one with another, but that they should look forward with one eye, having one faith and one baptism, having their hearts knit together in unity and in love, one towards another. So as we're trying to be united, we're commanded to not have contention and to work towards unity. And um, in True to the Faith book, it states that the Savior, if you recall, right before the he performed the atonement on our behalf. He prayed for his disciples and he commanded them to be unified as well. And he pled for this unity, saying that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That's found in John chapter 17. And um, from this prayer, we learn how the gospel unites us with Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. A lot of people get that confused, that they're one being altogether. We know differently that they're three separate beings, but they're one in purpose. So they're unified in all that they do to bring to pass the eternal life of man. And when we are living the gospel and receiving the saving ordinances and keeping our covenants, our natures can actually be changed so that we become more like our Father in heaven and Jesus Christ. And it's a progression. It's something we're all complete in working towards. And in fact, the word perfect means to be completed. So it's something that we continue to work on. Um, it goes on to say in True to the Faith that the Savior's atonement sanctifies us. And we can live in unity, enjoying peace in this life, and preparing to dwell with the Father and His Son forever. So as we continue to strive to become more like Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ, and be unified in their purpose together, then we have that nature changed and we become more like them. And are, have the opportunity to dwell with them one day. Um, so there's lots of different ways we can be unified and uh, sister 
Bingham, our General Relief Society president, talked in April 2020 about this unification. And I don't know if any of you have gone back and been able to read her talk, but it has become something that's very special to me as I've read and prepared for this. Um, in her talk, she talks about a couple and they have a tandem bicycle. And she talks a little about the dynamic of a tandem bicycle and learning how to ride one of those. And you have your main person that's in the front and then you have your stoker that's in the back. And you have to learn how to read one another and become as one on the bike so that you're turning the same way, that you're um, pedaling the same amount and helping each other work towards that unity so that you can ride the bicycle somewhere instead of just fall over. And I really like that. And so I just wanted to read you just a little excerpt from that story. The story involves Allison and, let's find it right here, and John. So they create a partnership. And that's another term that I've learned that Sister Bingham has used, unity equals partnership. They are synonymous with one another in their phrasing. So she said that their partnership was unique. And Allison explained that they had to be in harmony with one another. And for the first little while, the person in the captain position would say, stand when they needed to stand and break when they needed to break. But after a while, the person who was the stoker or the back of the tandem bicycle learned to tell when the captain was about to stand or break and no words needed to be said. They learned to be in tune to how each other was doing and could tell when one was struggling and then the other tried to pick up the slack. She said, it's really all about trust and working together. So that's our purpose, to trust our Father in heaven and to learn how to work with him in our lives. And as our prophet counsels us to hear him in our daily endeavors and to receive revelation for our life, that's what we're trying to accomplish, is unity with our Father in heaven and Jesus Christ. And we want this to be interactive. So is there any thing that you may want to say feel free to chat about it about unity or feel free to unmute and we'll notice that and then um we can have you speak up and that's with anything that we're talking about today so how do we become unified that's the question in true to the faith it talks about serving together teaching one another encouraging one another. As the church grows throughout the world, all Latter-day Saints can be united with our hearts knit together in unity and love, and we appreciate that there's cultural diversity in the gospel um, that comes, but we seek the unity of faith with one another and listen to our inspired leaders, which we're so excited next week we get to do. And Sister Bingham also asks us to um, take the time and effort it might be to be unified. And it's whether we're unified in our faith, unified with our families, unified with each other as a sisterhood, um, unified with our extended family. But she really wants us to listen to one another work on understanding others' viewpoints, and um, seek to work together to create that partnership or that unity with one another in our church responsibilities and at home so that we can receive the inspiration needed for our lives. And um, let's see. She says, Sister Bingham from our General Relief Society Presidency, seeing women as vital participants is not about creating parity 
but about understanding doctrinal truth. We can actively work to value women as God does as essential partners in the work of salvation and exaltation. So as we value one another and we are excited about what each other's doing, we're creating unity and we're helping to move the work forward in our homes and abroad. Um, there's a song that we were really playing with um, before meeting, and it's called Lord, I Would Follow Thee. There's a numerous amounts of advice in this song for creating unity. First, let's learn to love our Savior and try to walk the path that he has shown. Pause to help and lift another to find the strength we need to that's beyond what we can accomplish on our own. Savior, it says, may I learn to love thee. Lord, I would follow thee. Then it talks about that contention that I mentioned <laughs> in Messiah 18 that we're commanded to not have contention. So it goes on, who am I to judge another when I walk imperfectly? In the quiet heart is hidden sorrow that the eye can't see. Who am I to judge another? Lord, I would follow thee as we know our Savior didn't judge unless it was a righteous judgment. And he always looked for the best potential in one another. Then, what can we do? We can be our brother's keeper. We can learn the healer's art. And as I think of healer's art, I wonder, maybe it's just a listening ear that's needed. Or a friendly hello or a smile. These things don't have to be hard to do to be unified and allow other people in. Um, as the heart can be wounded and weary, we can show a gentle heart. Being our brother's keeper, we would follow our Savior. Savior, may I love my brother as I know thou lovest me. Find in thee my strength, my beacon, for thy servant I would be. How beautiful is that? It's right there in our hymn and so easy to refer to. We can just sing it on a daily basis. Help us, dear Father, to be thy servant, to be unified with thee. And these things I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>